ABC 10 News at 4 starts now. The first COVID-19 vaccinations already underway at Rady Children's Hospital this afternoon. The other local health care facilities that have received the vaccine today as well. Plus, we do still have students that are struggling. A look at the impact of distance learning in San Diego Unified. The successes and challenges grading information is now revealing. Take a slow breath in. Slow breath out. Here we it's underway. Within the last few minutes, the first health care worker at Rady Children's Hospital received Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccination. As you just heard, she says she didn't even feel it. Today's vaccinations also began at Naval Medical Center San Diego. And good afternoon. I'm Steve Atkinson. Our ABC 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala tells us while this is a good sign at finally getting things under control, Governor Gavin Newsom still has a grim warning. Across San Diego County, hospitals are receiving these boxes full of Pfizer's highly anticipated COVID-19 vaccine. Really a, a, a sense of hope um, and hallelujah and, and, and joy that the vaccine is finally here and we're finally able to do something to help start to win this battle. About 2,000 doses of the vaccine arrived at Rady Children's Hospital Tuesday morning. Ron DeLise, the pharmacy manager, was in charge of properly storing the doses. Hours later, about 100 doctors, nurses, and respiratory therapists, as well as other staff members who come in contact with COVID-19 patients, received their first injections. It was also a big day at Naval Medical Center San Diego. Frontline medical workers and first responders were first to get their shots Tuesday. The vaccine is not mandatory at this point. Those who get it will continue to wear masks and 28 days later, they'll be getting a second dose. UCSD also got its first shipment of nearly 3000 doses and expects to vaccinate high risk workers Wednesday. While this is a great step forward in the fight against COVID-19 and Governor Gavin Newsom announced California is expecting a second shipment of the vaccine soon, he also warned people are still being hospitalized with the coronavirus and more deaths are being reported. We have Orders in 60, 53 foot refrigerated storage units are currently standing by now in counties and at hospitals. We just had to order 5,000 additional body bags they just purchased for the state and we just distribute them down to San Diego, Los Angeles and your counties. People are encouraged to continue staying home when possible and following all the COVID-19 health guidelines. Mimi Alcala, ABC 10 News. Palomar Health says it will pick up initial doses from the county today and vaccines could be administered to staff as early as tomorrow. Tri-City Medical Center expects its first shipment of the vaccine sometime this week and Scripps is planning to start vaccinations for tier one workers this Thursday. And coming up at five, you're going to hear directly from some of those first nurses to get the vaccine. And today, Governor Gavin Newsom also expressed optimism while providing an update on the effort to vaccinate people in every county in California. He's calling it vaccinate all 58. We are in a sprint, not a marathon now. Sprint. Next 45, next 60 days. It's not a permanent state by no stretch of the imagination. Light at the end of the tunnel. We're going to come out of this stronger than ever. Mark my, my, my words. California will get another 393,000 doses of Pfizer's vaccine coming up next week. And we're also slated to get another 672,000 doses once Moderna's vaccine is approved. The FDA has analysis out on the second COVID vaccine that it will consider for emergency approval this week. We're talking about Moderna's candidate. Now, there are no concerns that would prevent authorization. Side effects were minor, very similar to Pfizer's vaccine. Now, its effectiveness varies a little more depending on the person's age, but it is still highly effective. Moderna says it can prevent asymptomatic spread, which is something that we're still not sure if Pfizer's can do. Meanwhile, the FDA said there were four cases of Bell's palsy reported among Moderna's trial participants. Three got the vaccine, one got the placebo. Our working hypothesis is this just was an imbalance in background rates like we've seen in other trials, but we'll make sure that we're going to actually query for that. The government says Bell's palsy, which is a temporary weakness on one side of the face, may not necessarily be a side effect. The amount of participants who got it were consistent with the expected background rate for this condition among the general population. The FDA and CDC will be watching for that, though, in nearly two dozen other conditions in all vaccine recipients. I think having this conversation about those background events, um, I mean, Vaccines are going to be given to people who are in long-term care facilities. Right. And, and we know things happen, medical events happen to those individuals as well. 
The government did point to one example out of South Korea where the numbers showed a higher death rate in older people who received the flu vaccine. The reality was the death rate was higher because they were just vaccinating more people. It wasn't causing more deaths. Now, when it comes to the COVID vaccine, these health leaders say the health benefits go beyond the virus. If they can get us back to a normal uh, environment sooner, they're gonna help prevent a lot of other diseases because if you look at the recent publications of the excess mortality yeah, right. in the United States from people not getting routine care, um, uh, uh, you know that, that's not a good thing either. New data on the Pfizer vaccine shows it can block 19 versions of this virus. The important part about that, it means that there is some protection against any sort of mutation. All right, this just in, Poway Unified is recommending returning all students to distance learning. This will take effect when classes resume after the winter break on January 4th, and it will last through at least January the 15th. It still needs to be approved by the board, though. The district says it's been experiencing staffing shortages since Thanksgiving. It says it has seen an increasing number of staff who have had to quarantine upon positive test results or close contact. It also stresses there have been no evidence of any COVID outbreaks on any of its school campuses. The school board will vote on those recommendations coming up Thursday night. A panel of local officials is highlighting the impact COVID-19 continues to have specifically on Latinos. Our ABC 10 News reporter Marie Cornell spoke to an elected official with firsthand experience in her community about what needs to be done to bridge the gaps. In a virtual news conference, six Latina women, many who are elected officials, shed light on how much COVID-19 has had an impact on the Latino community. We know this year um, has been extremely difficult. Among the list of panelists is National City Mayor Alejandra Sotelo Solis, who says COVID-19 has hit their city in so many ways, as many are working class families where the average income is about $41,000 for a family of four. There may be uh, families that have both parents working, one or two jobs. And when it comes to childcare, when it comes to access to um, Wi-Fi that is working, um, to uh, making sure that they have active, uh, you know, access to healthcare, it's imperative that as leaders and as Latinas, we really focus on making the connection and bridging those resources uh, to those that are most in need. So Tello Solis is also highlighting the importance of having discussions about the COVID-19 vaccine. Leaders within the Chicano Federation say even though Latinos make up the most positive COVID-19 cases locally, the level of confidence in a new vaccine is still low. And they point to a number of things, such as lack of access, not enough information, or lack of trust as contributing to that. So Tello Solis volunteered to participate in one of the vaccine studies and says there is a call to action to get involved in this coronavirus fight. Just as it took us nine months to get to uh, feeling comfortable about wearing facial coverings and masks, it's going to take the conversations to discuss what you're going to put in your body, doing it in ways that it's easy to understand and not creating more fear or confusion, um, because that's 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 not what this is for. A key part in what she believes is needed to make sure the gaps that have been created by this pandemic are closed. Marie Cornell, ABC 10 News. Well, let's get to the news feed here. It starts with one of the strongest voices in the Republican Party congratulating President-elect Joe Biden on being the next president of the United States. We are talking about Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell saying today the Electoral College has spoken. Biden is set to be sworn in January 20th. Today, Mexico's president becoming one of the final world leaders to send a message of congratulations to President-elect Biden. The president wanted to wait until the Electoral College had certified the election. Well, it's not a surprise that this holiday season we'll see fewer people traveling. AAA, though, expecting 34 million fewer Americans to travel. Three quarters of Americans are expected to stay home.